I just wanted to make a video about the GM 3.0 and 3.6. Basically talk about the different problems that they have and um, different solutions to help you prevent certain problems and also to help you prolong the life of the engine. The one major problem these engines have is this timing chain problem. This engine has three timing chain. It has a primary timing chain and two secondary timing chain. What the chain does is keep the cams, these, these four cams and this crank, everything in alignment because everything has to always be in alignment. And um, over time, the chain stretches and these, these cams, actuators, and the crank, they all go out of time and they throw like trouble codes like P0016, P0018, P0019, P0012, a whole bunch of correlation trouble codes. So what these codes are indicating is that the one of these cams and crank are not in time no more, so that's why they throw correlation codes. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to this channel and hit the like. Um, it really encouraged me to make more videos like this. When you start getting a whole bunch of correlation codes, what's happening is that the timing chain has stretched so far that the tension can't keep any more tension on the chain. And when that happens, is one of these cams or these two cams will lose its time with the crank and they'll throw a uh, correlation code codes like I said, like P0017, P0016. I think for bank one, it's probably P0017. And, um, and it's just an indicator that it's time to replace the timing chain. Once you realize that the timing chain is going bad, or once you real, um, take your car to a shop and then run the codes and let you know that you have a whole bunch of correlation codes, my recommendation is to go ahead and have the timing chain replaced because you don't want to keep driving it with a, a, a loose timing chain jumping around in there. It's just going to cause more damage later on down the road. So my recommendation is just to go get the timing chain replaced. I have done a lot of these timing chains over the years and one thing I always notice when I take them apart, they're always nasty in the inside, like literally just nasty, a whole bunch of slush everywhere in the inside. When, when, there's, whole, when there's a lot of slush like that, it's just an indicator that A, the oil never get changed or B is a longer duration during, during oil changes because all that slush is really the breakdown of the oil that's breaking down and causing everything to gum up in the engine. So I was always wondering why these engines are always nasty and slushy in the inside of it. So um, I did a little case study one time. I talked to about 30 of my customers that have uh, uh, 3.6 VVT engines and ask them like how did they go about changing the oil and 24 people told me that they change the oil every time the oil monitor like says five or ten percent and six people told me that they change the oil every like five six thousand miles they don't go according to the um, oil monitor they just go according to how much miles they're putting on the oil so at some point I um I took the the first valve cover, the front valve cover gasket off of the four people that changed their oil every four or five thousand miles and took four people that changes their oil according to the GM oil life monitor. And what I noticed is those people that are changing their oil every four or five thousand miles have really clean engine, like really not that much sludge and really clean engine. And those people that's changing the oil according to the GM oil life monitor engine just looked like crap in the inside, slush every freaking where. I did some research and found out that these engines have really poor ventilation problem. It doesn't vent that well, so what happens is because it doesn't vent that well, it causes the oil to break down a lot faster and it causes it to burn oil a lot faster than your average engine will break down or burn oil. What you gotta understand is that oil is really crucial to these um, 3.6 VBT's engines. These cam actuators, they all run off oil pressure. These little, these little oil passages that go in here that actuate these cams, that's how they actuate the timing from oil pressure. 
the timing chain tensioners, there's three timing chain tensioners, and the oil also run off oil pressure. So by not having adequate oil or by having oil gum up in these engines is really bad. What happens is it breaks down the it wears down the timing chain a lot faster because it's not getting as much lubricant as it's supposed to get. And these timing chains are always on high tension, so by the, by this timing chain moving around metal on metal, it causes a lot of friction, and that friction causes heat. And what the heat, uh, oil, what the oil does, the flow of good oil and clean engine does, it keeps this timing chain cooler, so it helps the timing chain last longer than driving around with no oil, or inadequate oil, or gum everywhere in the timing area just causes the timing chain to wear down a lot faster than it would. If you are having problems, timing chain problems, and you do have correlation codes, and you have to replace your timing, when you take your car, your vehicle in to have the timing chain done, my recommendation is always to request to have the four cam phases and the oil pump replaced. I know it's a little bit more, it costs a little bit more money to have it done, but believe me, if you plan on keeping your car really long, just go ahead and change the four cam phases and the water pump, and the, I'm sorry, the oil pump. At the end of the day, the fact that these cars have poor ventilation problem and always have problems with oil breaking down and gumming up, if you do all the job, you replace the timing chain without replacing these, and let's say like a couple of months down the road, one of these could fail or the oil pump could go bad. I've seen it happen. So my recommendation to my customers whenever they bring these in is always to replace the, the can phase and the oil pump. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even warranty the job if they don't replace the can phase of the oil pump, or I wouldn't even do the job because I believe in doing things the right way and this is how I like to do things. These engines are not bad engines. I feel like changing your oil at shorter interval would solve about 95% of your problems or 95% of the problems that people are having with these GM engines. My recommendation is oil changes every 5,000 miles, full synthetic oil, and use engine flush, especially the fact that these engines are known to have bad ventilation problems, so oil kind of breaks down or faster, so engine, engine flush will help it, uh, breaks, help it clean the engine up when you, before you change the oil. A couple of other things, the fact, that these, the fact that these engines also burn oil, I also recommend checking your oil every week, depending on how much, how frequently you drive the vehicle, but I also recommend learning to check your oil. It's very, very important. Like I said earlier, having oil in here plays a really crucial role about how fast just parts anything in the engine generally wears. So just knowing how to check your oil and checking your oil once a week will really, really, really help because there's a lot of time that the people come in for oil changes on these particular cars that runs these 3.6 and 3.0 in. There's really no oil in the engine. It's short like freaking three, four quarts. That's really not healthy. So just by just by changing your oil at shorter interval, you can prolong the life or you can prolong the life of these uh, these engines really, really good. They can, they can go a long way. I'm not gonna say there's a bulletproof engine, but I have seen some of these engines where people really take good care of them and change oil at shorter intervals, synthetic oil and engine flush. And I've seen some of these go to 160, 170 miles, 170,000 miles before needing any kind of um, timing chain replacement. So if you just follow, if you just really just change your oil on a regular basis, you can, you can take them a really, really long way.